I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're here speaking with Curtis Gazer from the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Well, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. Tell us you know, what you teach and, and where you teach. I'm currently teaching uh, marching band, uh, four jazz bands, two jazz choirs, and the orchestra. And uh, I've been doing that since 1984. Mm, Folsom okay. High School. Folsom High School. Yes. That's a lot of different um, bands and a lot of different... How do, how do you gel all that together and how do you even keep track of it? Well, it's a lot of planning. Plan, mm -hmm. plan, plan. Um, and uh, we have a very strong parent uh, booster club that, that helps me get through it. You know, with so much, uh, it seems like so much money being taken away from, the, from music and the arts, how important is it for you as a teacher to know that you have that uh, family help with the booster clubs? Oh, it's uh, immeasurable. I think that uh, the parents are constantly out fundraising and raising money to help pay for things that the school districts, our school district currently can't pay for. And um, they see value in it and they see what it does for their own uh, child's or children's lives. And uh, it, it's just a win-win for, for all of us. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your program. Uh, tell us some things that may be unique that, that help, help you stand out and be named a Teacher of the Year. Well, we have extremely gifted kids coming through there with some terrific training in the, in the lower grade levels. And currently, every child in the f uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade um, has to take some sort of music, whether it be choir or general music and or band. And uh, while the, uh, for the prep time, and we have a roving team that goes in, and it's great because it, it fosters uh, kids learning something that they might not have otherwise been exposed to at such an early age. And then we have a very strong middle school feeder program with award-winning jazz bands, and then these kids come to me, and uh, I get the chance to work with some, you know, kids who just, when you have kids who really want to be there and are completely immersed in it, um, life is good and uh, I'm in a great place. What's it like to see um, the progress in a student because obviously sometimes you see them when they have a lot of desire but very little skill. Correct. But over an, a period of time you see a lot of desire and a lot of skill. Correct. Well it's important that that uh, I'm paying as much attention to the 28th flute player as I am the lead trumpet player. And so that's the great thing about Let's take the marching band, for example. There's 140 in there, and all the kids, depending on their level, it, it doesn't matter. We all experience the same result because we're working together as a group, and we all contribute and all have a part in it. So it's, uh, you know, it's just important that we all understand the objective and the goal, and we work together as a group, and I think it's, it's, it's been a great thing. They've won a lot of awards and whatnot. So. What was it like uh, for you uh, when you learned that you, well, first of all, how did you get notified you were Teacher of the Year, and, and what was your reaction? Well, I was flattered, honored, and, and um, I'm, I'm not good with award type things, so I was, you know, sh shocked, and uh, then I was very grateful and thankful, and this has been a, a good thing for me to um, go through and think about, you know, we teachers just work and go, and it's good to reflect and, um, stop a moment and consider what it is that we do and it's nice to be uh, recognized for doing what I think is expected of us. So did the administrators burst into your classroom with balloons or, <laughs> or did the marching band uh, <laughs> form something that said congratulations you won? No, they actually kept it from me. I usually go to the event to support all the others that are winning and we were, I was nominated for the school and so I went and my fellow staff members were there and I really didn't, I didn't have any idea. And so when I, I started reading my bio, I was really <laughs> shocked. And then, um, you know, I, I was really honored. And I'm proud of uh, our school and our district. And how long have you been teaching? 27 years. 27 years. Yes. So, I mean, over that long period of time, what kind of changes have you seen in education that have impacted the, the way you do your job? Well, I think we constantly evaluate our students and I think it's important that we as teachers constantly evaluate ourselves and how we approach things and, and uh, even how we prepare and how we choose 
what it is that we're going to uh, teach. And one of the great things about being a music teacher is we're constantly learning new literature. We don't do the same music. So we get a chance to uh, come at it from a different uh, perspective every time we do it. And um, we also learn uh, by some uh, failures as well. And it's important that when we don't, I don't feel like things went as well as they should that I, I constantly keep notes on what worked and what didn't. And uh, I'm just constantly trying to make whatever the lesson is, whatever the piece is that I'm trying to teach, that it's gonna be as um, effective, uh, more effective than it's ever been. And that I reach everybody in the class, not just the top kids. Well, and the kids really want to do current music as well, Correct. right? I mean, there's some old standards you would do, but they really like to, you know, whatever they're listening to, they like to be able to play. Yeah, and that's an interesting point because I really try to incorporate into our shows and, and our jazz literature. We're not just doing, although the old swing stuff is certainly important, but I'm trying to do contemporary things as well. So we'll, I'll do a lot of uh, pop things in a jazz idiom or a lot of pop things in the marching band idiom so that the kids can relate if we're like last year we did an Alanis Morissette song on the field the mm -hmm. kids loved it and they work you know when the kids love the music you're just gonna get that much more out of them I think now is that one motivational tool you use for the students kind of music that they're familiar with it gets them excited yes most definitely what are some of the other things that you do to motivate kids well I think that that uh, I'm constantly explaining that anytime we're out in the public performing that uh, it's imperative that we're at our best, whatever that is at the time. And so I'm, I'm, I really push the students to constantly strive to be better. And not just personally, but as a group. And uh, it's always exciting for me, even more so than winning awards and all this stuff, is to see kids grow as human beings through the bands. Then they're working next to somebody they didn't necessarily care for in the beginning of the year. And by the time we're done there, they're able to get along and to work together, which I think is important as kids go out after high school and get jobs and learn mm -hmm. to work with others. Very important. What about those students that are a little bit harder to motivate? <laughs> well, those are the kids that I actually pay the most attention to. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of encouragement, a lot of one-on-one -on -one encouragement out on the field. I'll make sure that when I'm walking around and we're working on something that I'm all recognizing and making sure I'm communicating with the kids who seem to be not quite engaged. And there's, you know, it's a good 5%, I would say, mm -hmm. out of 140. So there's a handful I have to take, you know, precaution and make sure that I'm constantly uh, involved with them. Now, in your position, I would imagine there are a lot of um, performances off-site, not during the school days, a lot of weekends and nights. Yes. Uh, and I, how difficult is that for you to kind of teach the students how to balance that with their academics and, and doing these performances? It's important. I think from day one, especially the freshmen when they come in, the first thing on open house when I'm meeting with the parents is that, you know, I'll have 240 parents in there on that for the marching band I'm talking about. It's, in, it's imperative that these freshmen, who will be a quarter of that, um, that they start keeping um, day timers and, and time schedules so that you know, it's suddenly a change for middle school because there's so much going on. We'll have Monday night rehearsals from 5.30 to 9, and then we'll have a Friday night football game. And then Saturday we'll be getting up at 8 in the morning and traveling to compete in the Bay Area and be back at 1 in the morning. Well, when that goes on through October and November, um, it's important that they, they have, you know, six other teachers who want that from them as well. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm aware of that. I mean, if kids are hanging out in the band room or the music room and they're, they're not practicing and they're also not doing their homework, then it's, you know, do your homework or, go, you know, you're going to have to find another place. Those to are certainly warning signs. Use they? your time <laughs> wisely, please. Yes. Uh, finally, quickly, t tell me, what inspired you to be a teacher? Well, I really love uh, teenagers. I don't know what it is I always have. I think I'm a kid at heart, but I, I love seeing kids. There's so much growth in a short period of time. It's, it's really rewarding to see. And being a musician, you know, you spent a lot of time in front of people and getting accolades and you have that part of your life. But the other part is I think it's much more rewarding for me to see kids receive that adulation and the um, adoration of fans. You know, when we travel to Europe, people 
wanting them to sign autographs. I just love standing back and just watching the, the look on kids' faces mm -hmm. when that happens. It's a, it's a sense of uh, accomplishment for them, which is really what, what it's all about for me to see kids accomplish their, their goals. Well, congratulations to you. Well, thank you so being much. Being named uh, Teacher of the Year for the Folsom, Unified, Folsom Cordova Unified School District. We've been speaking with uh, Curtis Grazer. Congratulations to you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Sure.